All right, next up, guys, we have Project Aegis, and the rest is mystery. This is the official video. Thank you, Calendros, for the suggestion. Live in the studio, yeah. Once upon a lonely journey, same as everywhere she has been, just an ordinary quiet girl, scarred by all. So this is a really good example of a, a singer who utilizes head voice in an incredibly balanced and refined way. This is not falsetto. This is this is not at all falsetto, really. And here's why. There, you still maintain the color. Neil still maintains the color of his chest timbre in that high and breathy sounding tone, right? He also is able to get vibrato in the sound right that means the voice is relaxed the best way to get this sound is by letting your larynx drop and be very relaxed while focusing on the stream of air being consistent right that's hard to do because if you're not really trained if you don't understand how to use your voice i should say in most cases when you try to sing this way your larynx will come up and instead of being like I'm not even, this isn't even my style of singing, but instead of being like, ah, 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 it's going to be, that's with a lowered larynx, right? You're going to be more like, ah, 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 and your voice is going to, you're going to get tense, right? When you're singing in this range, you have to be so relaxed, so refined, so on your air. And it's actually a much more athletic uh, sort of motion than you, than you hear. Because it requires a really smooth flow of air, especially in this range, which is that passaggio and above area. It's that break and above. And he sounds like a tenor, so I would assume that break is around, you know, D, E flat, E, F, that area. Singing above that, where a lot of singers would go into that fuller belt, that louder sound, it's easier to bring more sound up there. I would bring more sound up there in that range. Um, doing it the way he's doing it, it's an incredible, delicate usage of the vocal folds. <laughs> Absolutely, Calendros. It's the type of technique. That's well said. It's the type of technique that comes from being able to do this for a long time. Or just putting in a lot of practice time. Both ways. Wearing blood that's not his own. As he squandered his inheritance. This is a much this is a very similar sound. The difference being he's actually placing it in the mask a little bit more and that's why we get a little bit more of that purity and more pointedness in the sound if you can hear it. It's a little less breathy. It's a little more on the Yeah, Matt Matt Smith from Theocracy. Yeah. Matt has a much a little more pointedness in the sound. He doesn't lose that balancedness of the of the voice. He doesn't lose that lowered larynx sound. But he still uses air in that consistent way in order to get that smoothness, right? It's not breathy, it's smooth. And then he can point it forward in the mask, and it actually is a really easy way to stay in that pocket, right? It's not as light as what Neil was singing with earlier, but it is. Uh, but it's, it's simply placed differently, I would say. Regardless, both of them have an excellent job of keeping that air steady, right? Most of the people who come on here for the voice clinic, when I work with them, it's about a lot of the issues come from not keeping the air steady. 
that's not a huge thing, but it, it's really just a frame of reference for how you conceive of your own voice. You conceive of your own air. If you think of your air as being like accentuated on each word, you're never going to sing steadily. But if you can think of your air as a one stream, one even flow of air, it doesn't matter the genre or style you're singing. You have to think of your air as an even stream. The air starts and the voice starts at the same time, right? And then the air just flows and the voice drops on top of it, right? It's that's these two guys are doing it perfectly. If you can listen and try to understand what they're doing with their anatomy, especially as a male, I know there are a lot of male singers in the community who are working towards this really this uh this head chest mixy sound, exactly what these guys are doing. It's about really digging into the placement, the feeling of a relaxed chest voice, but using the air in a steady way and a released way to get this more breathy, smooth quality. And you need to relax tension here and just keep the airstream even, steady, and consistent. That's the key. It's almost it's almost counterintuitive because you would think it's about keeping the sound feeling like it's in your head, like you would head voice. It's like it's like falsetto, but instead of raising your larynx, it's lowering it as deep as possible. So feeling the sound from your core. That's what that's what I would imagine these guys are feeling. Um I mean at this point in their careers. It's probably something they don't, they don't even have to think about. But the inception of this type of singing is about staying grounded and just keeping the air flowing smoothly. I could say it 500 more ways, right? But, you know, that's pretty much it. For the only life he's known So he tried And it gives you that flexibility. That's a really cool, actually, moment to talk about male head voice. That forward placement that Matt brings is what allows him to take that higher harmony in a, in a much easier way. And notice how both of them appro uh, approach their high spots. When Matt does it, on this, I'm just going to talk about this last tone. It's really beautiful. This is really good. So what Matt is doing is he's keeping that sound placed forward but he's not sending it forward he's letting the sound go up he, the, you know when you sing sound doesn't just go out your mouth sound radiates 360 degrees around you so one way of, of making sure it stays balanced like that and you're not you know falsely you know putting a this direction on the sound is by feeling it going up right instead of going forward if you're someone who feels your sound in a direction when you feel it going up you can go ah. you can rely on a more neutral vowel like uh Right, and then you can use less pressure, and and if you're doing it the way he's doing, it, which I'm not doing, I'm just trying to give an example of the vowel. You can raise that soft vowel, let the sound go up, and it's just <clears throat> good morning, campers. But it's it's the uh uh lift <clears throat> right up, and that while keeping that placement forward, not feeling it forward, but keeping that coming from coming from a place of that forward placement, right. It's easy to go up to that spot, right? Then practice using the breath, and then it all evens out, and you can get something close to this. Now, on the other hand, what Neil is doing, and you can see it in their mouth placement too. Neil has his tongue forward. He's opening up a little bit, as if someone were belting. If you were just looking at this picture, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between him belting out a massive ripped high note or doing what he's doing in this very soft way. But what he's relying on is the openness of the sound, the way that that you can amplify the acoustic of a belt is the same way you can amplify the acoustic of this kind of sound. Because he's doing ah, So much mucus today. I love how on pitch that is. But that would be an example of someone doing it. I mean, he's pushing when he does it, the onset guy. But <laughs> I love how on pitch that was. <laughs> Thank you, Stimba. But it's the same positioning for the belt, right? For the belt onset. He's just slowing down the air so that instead of being, ah, whatever that guy's doing, it's, or something, you know, of that vein. So now 
hearing the difference, that that one's a little more forward and pronounced, whereas what Matt's doing is higher and more released and more soft. It's I'm honestly closer to a classical positioning. Um, now let's just try to hear the difference. And they blend so well. Matt goes wah, Neil goes way. Uh, not necessarily maximum breath. It's more about consistency. Singing is all about finding the sweet spot. So you never want to use all of your breath pressure. You, won't, you never want to maximize the pressure on the voice. It's all about finding the right balance. And then using the sensations you have in your, in your vibrating here, you know, the sympathetic vibrations in your chest, sympathetic vibrations in your head to, to show the indication, right? Tay Teku, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for you guys, I'm still stuck at the two times a week schedule because I was uh, added on to some new rehearsals for some other stuff. Um, so I'm doing I'm doing Mondays and Wednesdays, the Wednesday stream, the Wednesday streams. As long as I don't have something going on, which I don't this week at least, um, we'll we'll just do clinics until everyone has a shot. Uh, you know, wrapping up around six hours. Just letting you guys know. Yeah, very fortunate for me, I guess. I get to you know sing and and make real money. <laughs> um. But the time, the time I'm sending streaming is still the same, right? So basically, I'm doubling the stream time on Wednesdays to make up for the lack of a Friday stream. However, we'll be adding more voice coaches to do stuff on Fridays for you guys um, as well. So the theme is uh, resuming. Yeah, this is a long recording. I spent a lot of time talking to the phone. Ernie, crushing it on the drums. Daniel. So if you're trying to learn how to belt, listen to Ernie, right? Listen to Ernie and watch his face. These are great videos because you see exactly what's going on in in everything these guys are doing. This is a perfect example. Look at his mouth position, right? When I when I try to make singing easier for someone here, we, I often describe neutralizing the vowel. Because unless you're supporting Im impeccably, you know, with all of your muscles of exhalation, your uh, quadratus lumborum, your, your, you know, I, f I always forget the name of these muscles, but all of your ab muscles, the muscles that line your back, the um, intercostal muscles from your ribs, as long as if you're supporting with all of those, pushing out with the intercostals and letting your ab muscles compress and, and send that air out in a really balanced way, Unless you're doing that perfectly, you're not going to be able to create a really good balance on your vocal cords. If, you, if you're not supporting, you're going to end up just tensing here. And that's why I, I kind of shy people away from belting practice until they've really mastered that breathing. This guy, Ernie, is a perfect example of what to do with your mouth once you've mastered that breath. Or, sorry, this is Daniel. Ernie was the drummer. So Daniel Hyman. The jaw is just going along for the ride. The jaw is going along for the ride, and Daniel is making the perfect mouth shapes to just let that sound flow out evenly. I mean, this is such a great, yeah, one of the best metal voices in the world. I, yeah, sure. I mean, he's one. He's a very unique sound. He's doing it really incredibly well, um, and just the way he's he's creating these even uh, vowel shapes. Each each vowel has its own shape, right? And and he's allowing it to, yeah. It almost sounds like Dick. It's like a lighter. It's like a more steely Dickinson. I would I would say Bruce has a, a darker sound a little bit. Um uh, yeah, I'll I'll leave it at that. Um but Daniel's mouth vowel positions are so flexible. It's all flexible in here. And Matt is relaxing and vertical. Matt is much more vertical. You can hear it in the depth when he says calling, uh, 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 right? How do you cover such a high tessitura? It's about reducing resistance, right? Spare, we've talked about this. We talked about taking weight out of the sound, reducing resistance, letting all of this be incredibly flexible so that you can just rely on the sound. The sound, when you sing this way, it sounds huge, right? But what, the sensation is very slim. The sensation is small. You want the sound to feel like it's coming out like a razor blade if you want to sing this way. And you, you want it to just feel like zing. It's just coming out of one spot in your head. 
and it doesn't feel like any tension is happening here. Th- that it requires a really optimal understanding of your own breath mechanism and a relaxed articulatory posture, but also knowing the positions to create the right posture. So, I mean, it's look, it's simple, but it's difficult. Prime, Elrond, good to see you guys. Um, it's a simple... Singing is simple, but it's difficult. That's it. It's very, it's about just simplifying everything, which we all hate to do, right? We all hate simplifying. We love adding complexity. Is that all singers? No. Is that people who love to spend time in Twitch chat and watch a lot of YouTube videos and learn and and obsess about things? Yes, I am one of those as well, right? The people who are here, the people in the Discord who participate, the active people, the people who binge watch reaction videos and YouTube videos in general and, and try to learn things. We are all very active learners. We're all actively participatory people, right? Hey, Dracaran, thank you for the $10. That's huge. Thank you very much. Looking forward to hearing that song. Um, knowing that and knowing the kind of people who discover this content and come here, I have a very... I have, a, I have a really uh, strong idea of what works for you guys because I'm the same way, right? It's hard to simplify, but we need to simplify when it comes to singing. Deep down, they always knew that something more. To pay the toll and get them prime. safely to I think we've done two rituals. Three more for the screen. Yes, one. Hey, Mike. So they Yes, Mike. If you if you take away the sound, it looks like these guys are just going. It looks like they're sleeping on it, right? Mike's absolutely right. So, guys, singing method. Mike, he's a vocal coach who's going to be doing some more stuff with the server. He also has his own Discord server with another vocal coach. They're awesome. You're going to be seeing a lot more of them here uh, in the Big Brain Singer server, but um. You see relaxation, visualization, which is absolutely impeccable, efficiency, balance, dialing things in, really just honing in on it, being, being like a sniper as a singer, right? That's, that's what it is. It's that it's taking everything out and just narrowing it down to the simple fundamentals that are going to allow you to accomplish your goal. Brittany likened it to a laser beam coming up, hitting her mouth and going straight out. Yeah. So that's one way of, of imagining it, Matt. It's fantastic imagery. You know, a lot of the classical technique visualization involves feeling the sound going up and out. And now when you're narrowing that to a more compressed belt sound, feeling that sound going up and hitting out is another way of doing it. That that will accomplish the same goal to a different timbre, right? It's that feeling of going up and out. Because the voice, the voice vibrates this way. So if you artificially try to push it forward, it's gonna be it's gonna be incredibly awkward. <laughs> it's gonna be incredibly awkward and compressed. So you want you want to feel it going up first, uh, unanimously. That actually for myself when I was in school accomplished so many things for me. Uh, really, just accepting that I need to feel the sound going up instead of out. I was always kind of overly compressing, all overly putting the overly placing the sound forward, tightening, squeezing it to go forward. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, savages. Keeping the sound going up. That's what all these guys are doing. It's really, really awesome. Spare, I think for you it's going to be huge. I really do. Horacle, thank you for the two months. Capriani, thank you for the tier one sub. Prime, thank you for the 10 tier one subs for the community. Absolute legends. <laughs> you guys are so generous. I can't believe it. Oh, so good. And it's simple. It's all in the same. The jaw is all in the same relaxed path. It's just, and it's just going along for the ride. If nothing is coming from the jaw, he's not choosing to do anything with the jaw, right? It's just an up, resonate, and then the jaw is this there for the words. That's it. Absolutely. It's fearless singing. That's part of it, too. You just got to suck it up and, and trust that it's going to work. Trust your own instrument. Beautiful. <laughs> No predestination for an ordinary life. We're designed to live for something more. Neil.
Dude, these guys are so good. Let's talk about age for a second, right? Neil like, has, a few, has a few years on Matt, clearly. And um, at, at least in the opera world, in my understanding, the, as your voice gets older, uh, Neil technically is, is singing from a more dramatic placement. And I'm not meaning dramatic as in, like, theatrical. I mean, the definition of dramatic when it comes to the voice is just relying more on a chest voice placement and then drawing things up from there, using a little bit more intense vocal pressure to get a sound out. Now, whereas Neil is using a more what I would call lyric placement, which is using the sound, uh, the sound's acoustics instead of voice pressure, right? Lyric refers to using the acoustics more. Dramatic refers to using the breath pressure more. Now, in both cases, you want to be able to manage that voice pressure. But in general, lyric sounds, relying on the acoustic, used to rely on a more balanced pressure here. For younger singers, that's usually the best thing to do. That's always like kind of the better sound. Uh, in both cases, you feel the sound in your mask. Whenever you're in the middle range, you want to feel the chest resonance, you want to feel the head resonance. But this is, it's just basically the ratio of how much you acoustic you feel. Um, now, as you get older, you know, older voices get a little more rigid. The Where you start out when you're young, you have like mostly cartilage in your in your voice box. And as you grow up, that, that cartilage hardens. That's part of the natural process. That's why I focus a lot on, for young singers, just really light and release technique. Because if you don't release, then you're going to be stuck once your voice once your voice gets f firmer and you can't deal with that pressure as much, your voice is going to be kind of stuck and you're not going to be able to figure out how to get to those high notes once this stuff becomes a little more rigid and less flexible. So the point being, it's just an interesting comparison to make. These, these two guys are in their natural element. They're using their natural voices to the strong, through their strengths, I would say. It sounds that way at least. Um, but, you know, age always plays a factor. And, and Neil is singing with a more dramatic technique whereas Matt is singing with a more lyrical technique, which is important to notice. Prime, thank you for that. Or, sorry, Garbox, thank you for that. Three months. I appreciate it. that chorus stuff. Leah. I don't know Leah. I want to hear some more Leah. Denicon, thank you very much for calling. God, Leah's got a killer sound. Are you saying are you saying this is a whole charity project? So they they raise money with this project. Absolutely beautiful. Metal Enya. I hear it. I totally hear it. Let's talk about her a little more. I was kind of like. Um, I'm sure she'll come in again. Cabriani, thank you for that sub for Kellandros. Much appreciated, my friend. <laughs> That's so beautiful. She's not opening her mouth all the way like we see with a lot of like more belty sounds. She's relying on that acoustic but creating vocal compression. Right. I had a really interesting conversation this weekend um, with uh, another vocal coach about, you know, what is compression? Like, what is vocal compression? There are really few good explanations of it, and I, I'm not saying I, I have the best explanation of it. But when you're listening, it's definitely that more clean sound that results, you know, when you say compression, it is literally the compression of the vocal cords that allows you to keep more sound, more... It, it's basically allowing you to scream without the vocal folds becoming imbalanced and, and, and raspy, right? So it's, it's, it helps you balance out the breath pressure 
by compressing the folds uh, and, and maintain a little more thickness in the chords that give you that more chesty sound. It's belting, right? Um, yeah, such a relaxed C-sharp 5, right? And, and it's because you can use compression and allow your chords to sustain a little bit more pressure and then also, on top of that, rely on the acoustics of the sound. That's why Leah gets this very colorful sound in her voice when she's singing with that much breath pressure, right? It's really awesome. Dude, that is a powerhouse. Being able to sustain that release. That laser beam sound. Look how relaxed his neck is, like, relatively. It's just so open. Yeah. I love that mic. Mic the singing method. I often feel it as holding back air while still projecting. And that's, you know, also what what a pojo is, right? That's also breath support. The feeling of inhaling and continuing that inhalation of air, right, to balance out the pressure. In fact, slowing down your breath more than it would be by like trying to shove the air out. No one shoves air out when they sing. It's all about balancing out the natural tendency for your breath in a high pressurized system being your full lungs to come out. If you just inhale and then don't do anything, the air is just going to go out. If you don't hold here, <sighs> I don't have to press in or anything. What most of us do while singing is we have to, what we have to do while singing is keep the air from escaping, right? That's, that's the oxymoron that most people don't understand. It's not about pressing the air out as fast as possible. The pressure you feel, the, the intensity you feel in your breath is actually slowing the air down so that you can, you can compress your cords and they can sustain a slower airstream that still has an element of compression to it, right? There's a thing, you know, compression, compressed singing makes much less sound than release singing. That's why compression is something people do when they sing with microphones. But it's not something you do without a microphone. Without a microphone, you have to actually use, literally use more air. But when you're using compression, you slow down the air. The vocal folds are then able to have a little bit more tension while still relying on the airflow to create the sound instead of actual musculature to hit them together as if it were a vocal fry. Man, talking about this reveals so much because it's logical. It's just a matter of figuring it out. Tacos Burrito 69. Welcome. The rest, as they say, is mystery. Why you chose me? A broken life reborn. All right, arms spread.
Yeah, dude. And it's just... Guys, go do donate to Project Aegis and get some kids some instruments. I hope my explanations of things were sufficient to where we could just kind of enjoy the end with a little bit deeper understanding of the music. Um, 